Filming videos is hard. Welcome to part two of this series, where we're building an API using Express.js. In this video, we're gonna take a look at something really useful, and it's called Express Router. So let's take a look. So in the previous part, we left it off with the basic scaffold of an Express app that you can see in front of you. But some of you may start to be thinking, if we have app.get, and we have to define one of these for every route in our application, and we're gonna build a massive API that potentially has hundreds or even thousands of routes, we can't put them all into the same file. It's not really practical. But fortunately, the people who developed Express understood this, and they gave us something called Express Router. So what we can do is then break everything off into individual files and break it up however we want to. So in our case, we're gonna put all of our roots into a roots directory. So we'll create that directory here. We'll call it roots, and we'll just put inside of it an index.js, which will just be the base of our roots directory. So to make use of that directory, which of course we'll put some code into later, we're gonna use app.use again. So instead of having app.get here, we'll say app.use, and then into that use, we'll require the roots directory. So what's happening here is that in Node, when we require a directory, Node will look for the index.js inside of that. So of course we created this root and it has an index.js. So whatever we export from that index.js is what we'll be requiring in here. So if we export the express router, it will require it in here and it will give that to the app.use so the router will run on every request and the router will then redirect to whatever file we need to handle the given request. So we can remove the app.get there, and now we'll just hop into the index. So what we need to do here is, again, we need to require express. But now, instead of saying const app equals express, we will say const router equals express.router with a capital R. And now we have this router object. And the router object functions very much like the app object. We still have use and get and post and all of those sorts of methods, but it just functions slightly differently so that we can use it in this sort of fashion where we have multiple files that each contain potential routes for our API. So we'll just say router.get and we'll give it the test route again, and we'll give it the same old callback object that we're, we've seen many times already, and we'll just send back, like, uh, we'll call it test, test route. And then, like I said, we need to export the, the router. So we do that by saying module.exports equals router. So now if we come back into the main index.js, we can see here, we've got this require roots directory. And as I said before, if we require a directory, node will look for the index.js. So then we're requiring an index.js here, and that will give us whatever that file exports, which was the router. So then we place the router into here, and as we know, app.use will trigger whatever's inside it every request, assuming it doesn't get matched up here. So now the router gets triggered, and now we're into express router land where we can route things off in different directions as we please. So if we just open back here, we can see this. We can go into the browser and take a look. So if we just go to test, we get test root printed to the screen. So it's working. So what I tend to like to do here is use this roots index.js as sort of a funneler for traffic into different files depending on what I need to do. So in this case, let's create a root that slash API so that we know that we're then dealing with the API. So if we wanted to have any other like static files or any other sort of functionality, we can have that elsewhere and everything that's after slash API we know is an API root and then have a different file that handles all the API stuff. So here we can use router.use just like we have done before. And as we already know, we've seen time and time again, 
the use method will just trigger whatever it's given for every request. But I did show you in the first video that we can give it a root so that it will only trigger every time that root is called. So in this case, we could say slash API and then require the file, which I'll call api.v0.js. So this is just a convention I like to use because over time APIs tend to change. You sometimes upgrade to a different version. So you maybe have a V0 to start with and you make some big changes to it and you migrate to a V1. Having this naming convention allows for easy differentiation between what files are controlling the V0 and what files are controlling V1. Because quite often you're going to have both online at the same time or bits of one API and some of the other because you're migrating over time. It can get quite messy. So I just like to use this convention. But now, like we've seen before with the require, if we put a router object into this file and then this app.use will call that router object every time we hit the API root. So that's exactly what we want. So if we create that api.v0.js, we'll do the same thing we've done before. Express equals require express. Router equals express.router. <coughs> and module.exports equals router. And then here we can say router.get slash now, I'll talk about that in a second. We'll just give it the same old callback we're used to. And we'll send uh, API root, API root or whatever. So we're saying get the slash root here. But in the index, we're saying use on slash API. So that can be kind of confusing. That definitely tripped me up when I first got started. But this one in API is a relative root to what's come before. So this use will only call this router when the API route is hit. And then as soon as that's hit, we're then running a router. But now the router doesn't need to know that it was on the API route. So we can think of it in a relative term from the router base. So this is not the base of the whole API. This is just the base of this given router because this router is only ever being called when we hit the API route. Like kind of tricky to understand, but I, I hope that's enough for you to kind of get it. So this is relative. So if we navigate to uh, our api.com slash api like that, that's when this will trigger because it's the slash after the API. So now if we go into the browser and we go to API, we can see API router. So now we've got this system where we can break things out into as many files as we need. So if we have a system where we have this as a sort of traffic director that's directing to API and to other routes that we need, we've got still got this test route. And then in the API, we can do another router use and require in other files that have routers in them. And then we can have like maybe an API slash users to look at the users or an API slash um, questions or slash kittens or whatever else you want and you can break it up into as many files as you need so that you can keep each file quite terse. You don't need that much in every file. You don't need to have thousands and thousands of lines in each file. Instead we can break it into many files that are small and easy to manage. So I think that's enough for this video. I think that kind of outlines what I'm trying to get at with the sort of modularity and breaking things out with an express app. If you liked the video, thumbs up, subscribe, bell notification, all that sort of stuff. If you really like what I'm doing, you can check out my Patreon. But until the next video, stay hungry and keep coding. Making videos. Ah.